let's discuss new updates from our beautiful neighbor Mars, the red planet that keeps surprising us pretty much every single month. And this time I wanted to start with the discoveries from Martian atmosphere, but really with this particular picture. The view of Martian horizon, captured by the NASA's Odyssey orbiter, showing this very beautiful green glow. And though in this case this is just a picture showing us what the Martian atmosphere physically looks like if you were to orbit around the planet, it directly connects to new studies that confirm that Mars does actually glow in different colors depending on the season. And here we're talking about the phenomenon sometimes referred to as the night glow. The atmospheric phenomenon that seems to be present on pretty much all planets in the solar system. But the colors themselves usually differ because of the process that's involved here. Here during daytime, the light from the sun splits apart various molecules producing individual atoms. This is known as photodissociation. These atoms then travel across the planet and will usually end up on the night side where they basically rebuild themselves into various molecules in the process releasing light. And so here on Earth, quite a variety of different colors are produced in the process. On planets like Jupiter and Saturn, usually this is in much higher frequencies, so it's normally ultraviolet light, but it turns out that on Mars it produces green colors. And this is due to the breakup of the CO2 molecules, very often in the upper atmosphere 40 to 150 kilometers in altitude. But intriguingly, a recent study discovered that there is at least one more glow at much lower altitudes produced by oxygen. And here this was caused by recombination of oxygen atoms created in the atmosphere during summertime, which actually produces visible light. Light that might resemble something like this. And this surprisingly seems to be concentrated in the polar regions of the red planet, mostly because the atmospheric flows seem to converge in the north and in the south. But depending on the season, the overall luminosity seems to change over time. So sometimes it's brighter in the north, sometimes it's brighter in the south. Intriguingly, a very similar type of a glow is known to exist on Venus and is basically produced in exactly the same way. But on Mars, because there is a lot less atmosphere, it actually allows us to study the overall composition of the atmosphere as well. For example, another unusual emission in the ultraviolet suggested that there is also nitric oxide that seems to produce the glowing effects only visible in the UV light. So this is definitely a very intriguing study, allowing us to learn more about Martian atmosphere. Then we have a few more discoveries from the surface of the planet. And here one of them is actually kind of exciting. This literally shows us the ice map, the water ice map of the entire planet. Although mostly focusing on the northern hemisphere, because that's where most of the discoveries have been made so far. But this doesn't show us ice on the surface, it shows us ice hiding underneath. With a lot of the surprises being in regions we didn't expect actually surprisingly close to the equator. But more excitingly, this is an interactive map, the link for which you can find in a description. So here, if one day you find yourself in need to plan some kind of a mission to Mars and you need a lot of water, use the map. But for me, the most interesting part of this is how this was discovered and confirmed. Because a lot of this was confirmed by looking at various ice revealing impacts. Basically various meteorites exposing the surface and then spewing ice all around the crater. And because there are so many collisions on the surface, this allowed the scientists to determine exactly what's underneath. For some of the craters, by looking at how fast the ice evaporated, they were even able to determine what sort of ice this was, suggesting that it's basically 99% pure water. And because some of these locations are relatively close to the warmer equatorial regions, it presents us with a lot more potential landing sites for any kind of a crewed mission. And so there's definitely a lot of water ice hidden underneath the Martian surface. And speaking of impacts, something else was discovered not so long ago by literally listening to the impacts as they happened and then reading the seismic data from the actual vibrations they produced. This was of course done by the now retired InSight mission and so for approximately 4 years between 2018 and 2022 it observed 18 quakes produced by various impacts that allowed the scientists to try to figure out what's inside the planet. In other words, they were able to analyze the internal structure of the planet revealing its layers. And although the initial discoveries suggested that the core of Mars might be a little bit bigger, the recalculations based on several quakes produced by these meteorites determined that the core here is approximately 1650 kilometers in radius but seems to have a somewhat unusual layer of molten rock right above it. A kind of a second liquid layer. And so basically there are two liquid layers inside Mars. The liquid core and the molten rock right above it. Which actually would suggest that Mars can still be somewhat geologically active sometimes. 
And as the scientists were wondering how often, and basically can it actually produce some kind of an earthquake or a new volcano, they got their answer almost right away. Within the same time frame, there was actually a detection of the largest quake ever, something that lasted for about 6 hours, and something that did not resemble a typical meteorite strike. And since all of the other detections also left behind a crater that was discovered later, sometimes even a large crater, in this case, nothing was actually found. This mysterious earthquake did not have an origin from the surface, and since the magnitude for this earthquake was 4.7 on the Richter scale, this suggested the size of the crater to be approximately 300 meters across. Something like this would have been seen almost right away. And so instead, the conclusion here was that Mars is indeed still geologically active, produces earthquakes, but exactly how is currently unknown. It's most likely not in the same way that we have earthquakes on Earth, there are no plate tectonics here, there are no continents, but it could be related to some kind of a stress inside the planet, or something else we don't really understand yet. But this is of course an important discovery, once again for those crewed missions. If we go to Mars, we have to be aware that not only are there meteorite impacts, there are also earthquakes, and dust storms, and no air, also radiation, and most importantly, no fast food or Starbucks coffee. So yeah, I'm definitely not going. But there were some other discoveries from the surface and from just underneath the surface from another mission, specifically the Juron mission by China. And here this was the result of ground penetrating radar discovering something at a depth of about 35 meters underneath. It discovered unusual polygonal structures anywhere from a few centimeters to a few meters across. And here they seem to resemble something we usually see on Earth as well. They resemble this. This is a result of thermal contraction that basically ends up cracking the surface, but then these cracks are then filled with water or possibly ice that's hiding underneath. But because this is seen as sediment and is actually inside the ground, this must have happened a long time ago, possibly billions of years ago, and was very likely buried by some kind of a major cataclysm that happened in this region on Mars, producing this huge amount of sediment on the surface. And so even though this is a sign of water ice cycle once again, here this also shows us a dramatic change in climate or potentially some kind of a cataclysm that had a huge impact on a lot of soil in the location at low to mid latitudes. So even though Mars used to have water, something major must have happened afterwards in order to change the surface so much and cover it with so much sediment. What exactly happened we obviously don't know, but it's definitely an intriguing new mystery. And lastly, we have this relatively cool video produced by ESA, a video of the region known as Noctis Labyrinthus, a huge formation on Mars that basically looks like a bunch of valleys and is located between a really large canyon known as the Grand Canyon or Valles Marineris and the tallest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons. But in this case, Noctis Labyrinthus is actually a really intriguing system that stretches for approximately 1200 kilometers, I guess around 800 miles. And what you're seeing here is a simulation or a visualization of what Mars Express would physically see with its camera and the pictures that it usually produces as a result. And a lot of these canyons have a name, they're known as Graben. It's basically a crust that suddenly fell into the ground compared to the surroundings that remain on the same level. But because of the size of this, the question is, what exactly produced this? With the answer being the extreme activity, geological activity on Mars. Here's actually what this region looks like if you were to look at it from farther away. And it's basically a result of the activity from this enormous volcano you see right there and from its partners nearby. As a lot of this volcanism started, it was so intense that it actually caused huge areas of Martian crust to start arching upwards and become stretched in the process. And this enormous stress on the Martian surface started to produce a lot of faulting along this entire region with large chunks of the surface falling underneath and forming various canyons and valleys, some as wide as 30 kilometers in width. And so basically pretty much all of this is a result of extreme Martian volcanism. So powerful and so dramatic that it kind of reshaped the surface of Mars, making it twist and stretch in a certain direction. And this video helps us visualize everything. You can check it out in the description. And so at least for now these are the main discoveries I wanted to mention, but we're also going to be discussing some of the new discoveries from the Mars Ingenuity or the Martian helicopter in the video that's going to be coming really soon. But also check out some of the previous discoveries from I guess the last few months in one of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that features the mission to Mars as well. 
Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.